tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink. Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here too, dude. I'm here too. There we go. I'm all over the place. <laughs> Anyways, joining me as always, uh, Xavier Guerrero and the ones or two, Jay Nice, Johnny Wooden. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing good. Great episode today. Uh, one of my favorites of all time. Thank you guys. I hope you guys enjoy this. We had Dr. Laura Sanger on and she crushed it. Real quick, uh, a lot of great things going on. I have some dates coming up. Go to uh, samtriplee.com, click events. Uh, in November, I'm going to be in Skankfest next weekend in Las Vegas. Uh, and then I'm going to be November 11th. I am in Kansas City, uh, 11th through the 12th. Then I'm going to, in December 2nd. I'm in, uh, how do you pronounce that? Col Colasso Casino. Casino. Colasso Casino in Calusa? Calasso, Calusa, California. And then the following day, bang, we're back in Fresno. That is December 3rd. Uh, we're doing two shows. We're doing uh, Tim Fall Hat Comedy, and then we're doing Swarm Tank, and you can buy a combo of those two. All those tickets are at samtriplee.com. Guys, I got my social media back. What's your social media? I actually marked the spot. Head over there. And Johnny? Uh, Johnny A. Woodard on Instagram. Johnny Woodard on Twitter. How'd you get it back? Uh, I don't know. They just gave it back. You know, hey, dude. Email what? or anything, or it was just it was back one day? It just one day show, it showed up. That's so they weird. didn't tell me why they took it down. They didn't tell me why it was coming back. So they have all the power. They, they just do whatever the they power. want, man. It's so so it's I went one day. I, I'm on. I'm doing a uh, Tuesday Woo Day. Yeah. And this this chick's like, dude, your your Instagram. I know I did it on Saturday. I think they're like, your Instagram's back. I'm like, what? And it was back. So I'm gonna play nice. Uh, we also have an Instagram for the podcast. Yeah, Ten four hat pod. Go Join us. There. Help yes. us, guys. T-shirts are a great way to support the show. Premium content is a great way to support the show. Uh, just go to Tip All Hat T-shirts. Uh, we got all of our T-shirts. We got a brand new one about to drop. I'm just finishing that one. What else do we got? Uh, everyone's been asking about the uh, how they can meet up. Yeah. And there's one already. There's, there, well, there was one. September 11th was Charlton, but I guess you can make your own event Oh, there. snaps. Well, yeah. You guys got to tell me about that. I hope you guys promote I just, it. Yeah, I just we found out right now. We had a meet up. Just go to samtriple.com, go to the events, go to events at the bottom. All the way at the bottom. At the bottom of the page is like, no events nearby, meet up with some other fans, set it up. Don't creep, guys. Wait, yeah. Charlotte? Charlotte in North Carolina is the only one? No shit. They were. They, Johnny, they you should fly in uh, and be like. It's already over? Yeah. Damn. But no, but we really will promote these. Like, I would go. No yeah, hell yeah. yeah. You guys make Johnny will event. fly out. Yeah. I didn't need any Meet everybody. Sign, sign some. I love Charlotte. Sign some Chi Chi's. Dilworth Neighborhood That'd Grill. That'd be crazy if you just showed up to so add when to was every that? once when in was a while. One? Today? Uh, September 11th. It's past 9-11. Yeah, All right, 9 we'll 11. do it again. So just see if you want to set up in one in your neighborhood, we'll promote it. Uh, also, guys, um, also uh, premium content. Great way to support the show. Uh, go to rockfin.com. $10. There's 400 different content creators on there. You get all that, all their content. $10. Eddie Bravo. I have three myself. Johnny and I have one. Xavier Guerrero has We Don't Smoke the Same. Broken Sim. Tim Full Hat. Zero My Spiritual Podcast. And again, one more time. Uh, uh, Tim uh, uh, Conspiracy Social Club with the Honorable the Honorable Brian Callen. Uh, I also have a Patreon with Johnny and Howie Dewey for Cash Daddies. Just go to da patreon.com slash cash daddies and uh, learn to invest. You know, you got to invest at your own risk. You know, everything's a risk. But if you go check it out, uh, people are making money on there in these crazy ass times. Anything else, guys? Yeah, that's about it. And if you're looking for Good free show. content, just go down. 
Uh, the telegrams there. The zero. The tinfoil hat telegrams there. The zero telegrams there. Join Nuked Social, and you'll get. Uh, you can be on all those. Plus, will never be taken down. It's completely decentralized. So go to nukesocial.com, join there, and then all my podcasts, all the free content is there. Uh, all those RSS feed, Broken Sim, Cash Daddies, Punch Drunk, You Know the Unwanted, old episodes like Conspiracy Social Club and Zero, and of course, your favorite, the Mac Daddy Tinfoil Hat. Click there, join, leave us a five-star review. Anything else, guys? Uh, October 12th, El Monte, pull up, uh, fullytoxic.com, me, Lee Syak, uh, Craig Condon, and eventually, if I get this going through, I will get Sam Tripley down there. Someday, we yes. can all dream. Guys, <laughs> Laura, Dr. Laura Singer, enjoy the episode. We go deep, homeboy. <laughs> Eric, open your mind. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Uh, I'm very excited to have this next guest on. Uh, this is my might be my favorite topic going into an sh- episode. I'm giddy with it, okay? Uh, she's an author. She's a psychologist. Please welcome Dr. Laura Sanger. How are you, doctor? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you for coming on and uh, writing an amazing book and having an awesome subject to talk about. This is my jam. Uh, for our listeners who may not be familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where our listeners can find you? Absolutely. So um, as you mentioned, I'm a psychologist. And so um you know, I had no intention of writing a book on the Federal Reserve. So it's a little bit interesting that I find myself down this path. But, um, you know, I'm one of those people who absolutely loves to learn. And so I'm constantly, you know, formulating questions in my head to research. I've got this naturally inquisitive mind. And so, um, you know, I bring uh, you know, my skill set of doing research. I started in research back in 1989 when I worked at the VA Medical Center in La Jolla, California. And from that point forward, I just really enjoy research. So I bring that skill set and then also my skill set of doing spiritual mapping. And I offer a unique perspective on the roots of the Federal Reserve. So the best place for folks to find me is I have a website called no longer enslaved.com. And you can start there. I have all my videos and podcasts there. I also have a YouTube channel called No Longer Enslaved. And I just finished a 10-part series called The Impact of the Nephilim Agenda Today. And I'm in the midst of a seven-part series series on spiritual mapping. I love all of it. Uh, (laughs) I'm all into all of this. This is my jam. And I'm very thankful that you came on the show. So as a psychologist, I want to ask you about the term conspiracy theorist. What is your thoughts on it? Do you embrace it? Do you push away from it? Is it, it, it's kind of crazy in this day that it's still seen super taboo. Uh, When I just kind of embrace it. Uh, I, I don't think mm-hmm. it's any more like crazy running around with a tinfoil hat on. I think it's people who question, uh, the uh, spiritually question the official narrative and they're more mm-hmm. right than they're wrong. What are your thoughts on that from a psychology point of view? Well, you know, as a psychologist, um, you know, people can have all sorts of different ideas, um, you know, narratives and schemas about, how the world works, you know, how relationships work, what's behind the, you know, operating behind the scenes. And I think what we're finding, you know, certainly since 2020 is what people would label as conspiracy theorists or theories are no longer just theories. Um, I think we're seeing things getting proven out right before our eyes. And so, of course, I've been labeled as a conspiracy theorist. I've lost, you know, close friends as a result of it. But, you know, my really what my passion is, is digging deep um, behind the scenes and uncovering what's been hidden in the shadows. And so, you know, that's a little bit of what I do Um Well, I should say that that's a lot of what I do in this book that I wrote, but also, you know, in thinking about um, from a spiritual perspective, you know, there's a lot that happens in the spiritual realm and people, a lot of people don't even think that the spiritual realm exists. And so, you know, I come from a biblical worldview. I'm a follower of Jesus and I definitely believe in the spiritual realm, the reality of it. 
And so that gives um, even more greater depth of perspective to what's happening in the world today. Uh, I love all of it. Um, wh- why do you think, you know, I was just home to see my family, my mother, my brother, who I love with all my heart. I think about them. I, my, the love glows in my body of how, how much I care for my family. But they are so anti conspiratorial. They're so anti uh, questioning the official narrative. Why do you think that people are so anti conspiracy, even though they can believe in some conspiracies, let's say um, COVID, right? We'll get, you know, oh God, there's a virus going around. And everything. You know, it's like, oh, God, I, I got to buy into that. What? Russian collusion. Russian. No. Okay, great example. Even better. Russian collusion. A Russian tactic. How could such a wonderful woman like Hillary not be elected? I don't understand it. What, what are your thoughts on why there are such a, a large part of the society that pushes back regardless of of the evidence that's out there. Well, I do really think it comes down to mind control. And, you know, there's, like I said, there's both kind of the natural aspect to it. And maybe later, um, you know, as we get into the uh, depth of what we'll talk about today, I can talk about mind control technology that's being, you know, waged against us. But then also kind of bringing it back to that spiritual aspect as well, there's um, such a thing called strongholds. And, you know, when there are um, spiritual forces of darkness operating in a territory, whether it's over a city or a state or a region, that can establish uh, strongholds. And when you come under that stronghold, it's a, it's a little bit like coming under mind control. And so when you live in a, a particular area, for example, and it's steeped in, you know, the, these strongholds, holds, then it can really impact the way you think. And it's very difficult to be able to break free from that. But also you have, you know, generational um, baggage that runs through family lines and that generational, you know, curses or iniquity, whatever you want to call it, that can also impact, uh, you know, whether or not people can think clearly and if they're kind of coming under this mind control. You know, one of the things that goes back to is spiritual mapping. Are you guys familiar at all with what spiritual mapping is? No, I'd love to hear that. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, what spiritual mapping does is it essentially looks at the physical, social, and spiritual pulse of a society or a, you know, a people group, a city, a region, whatever it is, you know, is the focus of the spiritual mapping project. And it involves digging through history to uncover those ancient roots of defilement. Now, that's what I do in my book that's focused on the Federal Reserve. But, you know, when when we think about it, land can become defiled if there's particular types of iniquity. Iniquity is essentially like patterns of sin. And that could be, you know, sexual perversion, idolatry, broken covenants, or bloodshed. And so when those things happen on the land... It creates what I mentioned, and that is a stronghold. And that can really negatively impact the people that live there. And so, you know, what we want to do is we want to be able to identify, you know, what's happened on the land. Because, you know, if there's wicked acts that have occurred on the land, that actually can lead to curses being attached to the land. And I, I imagine like... (laughs) <laughs> blowing your mind have you guys ever been to like a place where you just you're walking around or you're driving past and all of a sudden you get like these this creepy feeling like something's not right or there's something really dark about that kind of a place have you ever experienced anything like 100%, that 100 percent. you know this place has weird energy uh there's some darkness holding on all uh, yeah man for sure i mean I as a kid that. there's always that house yeah, there's his house. Feel like where, that house yeah. is creepy. The house yeah. is weird. Don't yeah. go over there. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. totally feel that. So that's what essentially spiritual mapping does is it helps us see, you know, into the spiritual realm what normally we wouldn't be able to detect detect just with our natural eyes. And so, you know, what we do is we um 
we use it as a tool to be able to identify, you know, what are the root issues that really are giving access to spiritual forces of darkness to rule over a territory? And, you know, through prayer and research, we identify, you know, those spiritual roots. And then we want to be able to equip people when they go on the land to be able to pray and, you know, strike at the root of the issues. We want to break off the curses that are there. And we want to release the full measure of blessing that God has intended. So essentially, the people that live there are no longer negatively impacted, but instead they can prosper and thrive because spiritual mapping, really, the goal of it is to set people free from systems of enslavement. I love that. And I believe that 100% when something dark has happened, there's energy mm -hmm. left. You know, I don't know if you believe in ghosts, but like for me, it's like how many, how many ghosts do we always hear involved in like some very like uh, very violent, dark uh, death and their energy mm -hmm. still around. And sometimes yeah. I think the transfer from them to w whatever's on the other side, wherever they might be going, gets knocked off and they're stuck here. And there's a lot of bad energy with that. And, you know, mm -hmm. what, whatever we do, exorcism, say whatever that procedure is to cleanse that area is uh, very important. And I totally 100% believe in all that. And like, I, this is my favorites. I love all this stuff. I'd rather, uh, this is, well, I don't know why the nightly news isn't Me talking too. about this stuff. Like their ratings would be so huge if this was the, was on the nightly news instead yeah, of yeah. even just a segment, just give ghosts a segment. Yeah, Let's just, just do the ghost go, report. The right? ghost recap. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would, three I, kids picnicking in Arlington saw a ghost. You yeah. know, like, I would, I would, I would watch a news if they had a segment on spiritual mapping for sure. Of like, well, oh, this area is a little whacked let's let's clean this area up right i mean like we go in sure. areas and yeah. we like clean them up with we, uh, clean up their garbage and their litter why can't we go in there and clean up their spiritual garbage and litter and then like, it wouldn't be brainwashing tv tucker collison's be... views would go straight up yeah for sure all right guys we gotta take a quick moment to hear from one of our sponsors one of our longest running sponsors and friends of the show copy my crypto Guys, listen, the recession is underway, fuel is through the roof, and food prices are insane. People are beginning to lose their homes. But there can be a massive positive to this because recessions are where more wealth is made than in any other time in the economic cycle. Take the last recession. Those who invested in property and stocks more than doubled their money inside two years. But no market rose like crypto where people made 10, 50, even 100 times over the same period. That's what James McMahon did. On his Crypto with James YouTube channel, he told his 21,000 subscribers to invest in the same 26 coins that he did. Had you invested $100 into each of those coins, you'd have been in profit for more than $123,000. $1,000! Wow! His top pick of the year, a crypto called Phantom, went up a staggering 692 times. And remember, this is public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify it yourself. James will be sharing every coin he buys during this recession on his Copy My Crypto membership site. It's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest. You simply copy James. So to join the 2,800 members who copy James, go to copymycrypto.com slash Sam. That's copymycrypto.com forward slash S-A-M. It's your call. You can thrive in this recession or be another victim. Go to, go visit the site and read every word now. And here's another word from one of our sponsors, Miracle. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? Oh, it can lead to, yeah, gross. It can lead to acne, allergies, stuffy nose, and it's gross, super gross. Miracle brand offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bed sheets bedding such as sheets, pillowcase, comforters, and prevents 99% of bacteria and requires three times less laundry, okay? Using silver-infused fabrics, okay? Miracle brand sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at your perfect temperature all night long so you get a better sleep every night. These sheets are infused with natural silver that prevents 99.9% .9 of the bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresher three times longer than those sheets. 
No more gross odors. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands. The sheets use a premium 500 thread count sateen weave that's made with USA grown Supima cotton, which is one of the highest quality cottons in the whole world. That's incredible, Johnny. Stop sleeping on bacteria. Please stop sleeping on bacteria, people. Clean sheets mean less bacteria to clog your pores and fewer breakouts and other skin problems. So here's what we need you to do to battle the bacteria. We need you to go to trymiracle.com slash tinfoil. Okay, that's trymiracle.com slash tinfoil to try today and we we've got a special deal for our listeners be sure to use the promo code tinfoil at checkout to save 40 percent and get three free towels miracle is so confident in its product it's back with a 30-day money back guarantee so if you aren't 100 percent satisfied you'll get a full refund Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Brand. Go to trymiracle.com slash tinfoil and use the code tinfoil to claim your three, your free three-piece towel set and 40% off. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash tinfoil. Thank you, Miracle Brand, for sponsoring this episode. So uh, <laughs> the Nephilim is a very big, uh, a, bi- a, a really big point in my life in terms of uh, when I started to realize there was something else going on. Uh, people, we've had people on Matt, Matt LaCroix, famous uh, author who's been on our show many times, made the Mount Crushmore of the show. And he talked about how all this uh, architecture around the world, the the uh, mm-hmm. Sumerian tablets, all that stuff, talk about the Nephilim. So let's get into a little Nephilim uh, agenda. Can you tell us a little bit about, and tell us a little about your book as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, kind of tying together what I just talked about with spiritual mapping in 2014, I just felt this nudge from the Lord to do a spiritual mapping project on the Federal Reserve. So that's what I did. And I gathered um, some people and we prayed through those targeted prayer strategies that I had identified based on our defiled monetary system. And I really thought, you know, my assignment was done. Uh, that, you know, I could move on. I'm one of those people where God gives me like prayer assignments and I I pray into something until I feel like there's breakthrough or until I'm released from it. So I, in 2014, I thought my assignment was done, but um, God just kept nudging me that I wasn't done. And like I said, I had no intention of writing a book on the Federal Reserve, but what I did is I, um, you know, I, I spent four years researching and writing uh, this book, and it's a deep dive. My research uh, spans from the dawn of humanity to our current day. And what I do is I identify this Nephilim agenda that has defiled our monetary system and practically every institution in our land. And so I'm able to trace the Nephilim agenda from the days of Noah to our current debt enslavement system we call the Federal Reserve. And I know that you know, since this book has been published, one of the things that I'm called to do is really bring to light, you know, these things that have been hidden in the darkness and expose the fruitless deeds of darkness. So I'm always grateful to come on shows like this and talk with new audiences. Um, So thank you. But to dive into the Nephilim agenda, um, you know, it was unleashed during the days of Noah. And essentially, in a nutshell, it is the plan to defile the human genome through propagating a hybrid race. Now, the purpose of that is to overthrow God's kingdom. So it's no small agenda. And the origins actually go all the way back to Genesis 3, uh, which is called the seed war. And I just I'll read two uh, passages from Genesis 3 uh, to kind of describe it a little bit more. This is verse 14 and 15. It says, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle and more than every beast on the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. So essentially what's happening here is after the fall, you know, of Adam and Eve, what God did is he declared war between the seed of Eve, which is humanity and the seed of Satan. So one day Eve's seed would crush Satan. Now, this was a prophetic declaration of the coming Messiah. So Satan's strategy was to contaminate the seed of the woman by altering the genetic code of humans. 
And this is where the fallen sons of God really become integral in Satan's strategy. And we can read about this in Genesis 6 and also in the extra biblical text of the book of Enoch. But what happens is these fallen sons of God, they chose to leave their heavenly abode. And when they did, they invaded the earth realm by descending upon Mount Hermon. Now, for those that don't know, that borders uh, Syria, Lebanon, and Israel. And so from that point on Mount Hermon, these fallen sons of God, they began lusting after the daughters of men. And they take them as wives, mate with them, and then defile the human genome by birthing a a hybrid race of giants, which is known as Nephilim. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. I believe I, I I completely and utterly believe this. This is the war that's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we see a lot of this with this vaccine right now and alternating G- mm-hmm. DNA and all that, and it just it's the same plan over and over again in this war between light and dark. And and I mean, this is it, man. I I one hundred percent believe all this mm-hmm. stuff. And when you talk about that that area what were the three countries you said israel syria and lebanon lebanon and like there there's supposedly some nephilim sites in armenia as well and that whole area is like they want us to believe it's about oil the war is about oil when i believe the war is is about that that area is very sacred Mm-hmm. And there's something special there. Like, like artifacts? And, like everything. Like the energy, the history, the spiritual mapping, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. That area is very, very important. And that is the real battle. We have oil. We find oil everywhere. I mean, you leave the LAX and drive here. They're pumping oil over there. I mean, oil's everywhere. It's not about oil. Oil's what they want us to believe. They tell us there's a limited supply, so we got to get more. And then, like, okay, then we got to go over there and get the oil. But I think that area is, is there's, it's a very special area. And that is what mm-hmm. the true war is. It's not oil war, it's a spiritual war. Definitely. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I did in my book, um, because I felt like it was really important given this ethereal nature of the Nephilim is to develop this set of criteria that would help us identify, you know, presence of Nephilim traits within an individual. And so what I did in my book is uh, in chapter 13, I identify four physical traits and 19 behavioral characteristics of the Nephilim and their giant offspring. What? Yeah. <laughs> Where are they? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, you know, one of the reasons why I do this is just like what you're saying is it's so important that we're not deceived in thinking that the Nephilim only roamed the earth during the days of antiquity. There are Nephilim and Nephilim hosts alive today. Now, I should differentiate. So Nephilim host is actually a term that I uh, coined in my book, and it represents a human who has partnered with the spiritual forces of darkness to carry out the Nephilim agenda. So these would be the people that would meet this proposed criteria that I set out. That's so, what we're talking I can about. See, I can see in Sam's eyes just that Jack Nicholson <laughs> meme of you going like, <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's like, okay, I don't mean to cut you off, but this is what we're talking about. This is when I was mm-hmm. on Rogan. I'm like, this is spiritual war and it's these occult sorcerers and you call them a, ne- a Nephilim host, right? That are, yes. are made deals with these dark entities and they're waging war. And it like it's the only thing that makes logical sense. Because any other discussion where it's like, okay, they thought they were doing good and it just didn't work out, but somehow they still got all the money and all the power. And it just seems mm-hmm. like, and then rinse and repeat on every single trauma and war and psyop and everything. Like, like it always goes their way. Uh, it doesn't work out for humanity, but the elites always get it and they get more money and they get more power. And they got all the money and they got all the power so why would they mm-hmm. keep doing this? It's spiritual. They made deals with dark entities, in my humble opinion. And the- exactly. Yeah. 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 And so these, you know, these Nephilim hosts, I think, really are the titans of global governance. So the, just like you're saying, these are the global elites over banking, over industry, media, academia, big pharma, political establishment. 
Now, one of the things that I think is really important to understand is that these Nephilim hosts, they are intent on enslaving the masses through mind control, domination, and intimidation. So at the core of the Nephilim agenda is the goal to strip us of our humanity because they hate the fact that we are created in the image of God. So they just want to defile our human genome. And I think the other thing that's really important to understand is that the Nephilim agenda and the globalist agenda are serving the same end goal, and that is the total domination of humanity. When you think about it, it's really tyranny on the grandest scale. And then, of course, you know, we have Klaus Schwab, you know, telling us through the Great Reset that, you know, the world's citizens within 10 years will own nothing and be happy about it, right? Well, you don't have to be a political philosopher to figure out that if we own nothing, it means the state owns everything. And so this great reset is really rapidly advancing us towards uh, you know, this Nephilim agenda. And that's why I think it's so important that we're not caught sleeping because um, you know, we really have to understand what's going on and the roots of the Federal Reserve and how the Federal Reserve is financing this all. I, I completely agree, and we'll get into some Federal Reserve stuff for sure. Uh, I mean, like, let's take a look at you know. I I, I always say that at the, you know, at the you know, everybody wants to get into uh, you know uh, Jewish world order and all that stuff. And I, again, I always push back about it. I get get ton of crap on the internet about it because I won't buy into it and I refuse to buy into it because I think when you take a look at all these people, let's just say Jeffrey Epstein, right? When you see all this stuff, there's so much occult symbolism involved in it. Mm -hmm. There's symbolism mm -hmm. everywhere. And like that to me tells you what happens behind closed doors. It's very mm -hmm. easy to play a role and wear the mask of a, a Judaism or or Catholic or Islam or whatever, so you can walk amongst us, right? Uh, but behind mm -hmm. closed doors, they serve a different uh, uh, a different agenda. And you know, you take a look at it. Black. Well, who's running the Federal Reserve right now? We'll get into that. But you know, like Black Rock, right? Who in, in, in Saudi mm -hmm. Arabia? What do they walk around uh, ten times counterclockwise? They're doing what? <laughs> that is. That's a black cube. Black mm -hmm. rock, black cube. There, you start seeing the, the, the same things over and over again across different quote-unquote cultures. It's the same people in power all talking the same stuff with the same words, the same agenda, and they mm -hmm. want us all to fight with each other. But in reality, it's this small group of people who I believe have made deals with uh, darkness. Would you absolutely? Say, would you say the word lizard person was put on there to make it seem crazy so we don't use nephilim, or would you say that's two different, completely different types of people? Well, are you asking if there's reptilians? Yeah, reptilians, lizard people. You know how they're usually. Oh, he believes in lizard people, and it makes us look stupid. But if you say nephilim, you're like, who's that? Well, most then you people look don't into even it, know who that what that is, and that's why you, they use lizard people. Mm -hmm. You think they threw that in there to make us look stupid in Wouldn't a way? Doubt it. I, I don't think that necessarily. That there, there. I don't know where the doctor falls on that. Personally, I think there is something different about the people who are running stuff. There's, I, I think there's the people who are born into it and carry on the family tradition of trauma, and then there's people who want to be in the elites and they'll do whatever they have to take to be brought into the inner circle. That's mm -hmm. my my belief. I don't know what your thoughts are, doctor. Mm -hmm. Well, I think definitely um, any way that the Nephilim can, uh, you know, cast dispersion on their existence, they're going to do it. And so whether that's, you know, labeling reptilians or lizard people so that we think that we're, you know, people think that we're crazy. Now, there is such a thing as shape shifting. And so that's what reptilians do. And that is part of, you know, this whole Nephilim stuff. And, you know, it's interesting is, you know, I, I love to dig into history, and, and that's essentially what I did in my book. And so looking at the roots of the Federal Reserve, and I'm talking about the spiritual roots, like how did this thing come into existence? And it wasn't just in 1913 or in 1910, you know, when the six men stole away in the dark of the night to Jekyll mm -hmm. Island. This actually goes all the way back, you know, to the dawn of humanity. And, you know, one of the things that I love to do in my book is I performed what I like to call an archaeological dig on language. 
And so what I did is I, you know, I look at the the meaning embedded in the original language of the words. And, you know, from doing that, I also then take into context, you know, what's happening in the in the scriptural passage or in these extra biblical texts or even in ancient documents. It's, and, it, and it's a little bit like looking through a telescope of vocabulary to reconstruct these ancient events. So what I found is by digging into the etymology of words, I actually was able to uncover this treasure that's been hidden in the sands of misinterpretation. And that's really where the roots of the Federal Reserve go back to. So in a nutshell, because, you know, my book is 400 and some odd pages and 553 references, I'm going to give you like the cliff note version summary of the roots of the Federal Reserve. And it goes back actually to Genesis 3.13. And I'll read to you this passage um, first in the English, and then we'll dig in a little bit. It says, and the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. Okay, so in the English translation, there's absolutely no connection to the Federal Reserve. But one of the things that I love to do is I love treasure hunts. And um, I would say that the Lord had a lot of fun uh, with me and laid out these clues. And I would just keep digging and digging. And, you know, one of the things is digging into the original language. So this particular passage is written in the Old Testament, which was written in Hebrew. And so if we look at some of these words in the Hebrew, it begins to unlock some clues. So the first word is serpent. In the Hebrew, it's nakash, and it means serpent because of its hissing, but it also comes from a root word that means divination, hiss, whisper a magic spell, or enchanter. So here we're beginning to see a picture um, back to what you were saying about the occult. Here's the origin of it. So we have Satan most likely appearing in this, you know, appealing manner to Eve, kind of masquerading as this angel of light while whispering magic spells over her. So essentially Satan engaged in witchcraft to manipulate Eve to walk in rebellion. Then if we look at the word deceive um, in, in this passage, it's the Hebrew word nasha. And not only does it mean deceive, it means to beguile, mentally delude, morally seduce, to impose, and to cause to go astray. But that's all according to the Strong's Concordance. Now, if we consider another resource called the um, Brown Driver Briggs uh, resource. It's a Hebrew and English lexicon. It actually defer- defines nasha as to lend on interest, usury, or to become a creditor. <laughs> so here's where the dots start to connect. So the Hebrew word for deceive means to make someone a debtor. Now, when I discovered that, I nearly fell off my chair because Herein lies the link to the Federal Reserve. This this verse is uncovering the hidden agenda. So when, you know, Congress passed this legislation, the Federal Reserve Act, just before Christmas in 1913, what they were doing is they were uh, deceptively passing this legislation that would enslave American citizens in debt while enriching the coffers of the banking elite. And so we see that the Federal Reserve System is actually rooted in Nasha, which is deception, which is the language of the Nephilim who are the seed of Satan. So you can see how it begins to come 100%, together. 100%. I see th- 100%. I mean, you get into all of this stuff. I mean, when you talk about the story of Jesus and what's told in the Bible, he goes to the Mar. And I, I don't know if I'm jumping into something you want to talk about later on, but uh, basically, the story of Jesus walks into the market. Uh, there are bankers loaning money for uh, interest. And he says, You can't do that. He kicks their table over. And it's like, because you're not supposed to charge interest, right? You, if you want to lend somebody mm-hmm. money, that's fine. I, maybe I'm wrong on that. But, you know, if you got, you need some help, you know, abundance to me is I help you. I, I have some money. I give you some money to help you uh, take care of your problems. And then later on, you pay me back at cost, not on interest. And then we take a look at what's going on with the Federal Reserve right now. It's all mm-hmm. about the interest. And, like, there's so many. And I don't want to get too far ahead in, in, in case of things you want to talk about. But there, there are so many people, intelligent, 
maybe not smart, but intelligent people <laughs> that have no clue about how the Federal Reserve works, how the mm-hmm. IRS works, and what our taxes do. They have no clue. And they're the, some of the most intelligent human beings I know. And it's mm-hmm. unbelievable. And I, this is really, uh, you know, I mean, the whole story. So when we go back to Adam and Eve, do you think that that he wasn't a snake but actually came down as an angel and that the story gets mm-hmm. lost in translation because people are doing it in English and not through the Hebrew version? And so everyone automatically thinks snake and it's really a, a deceptive angel. Yes, I mean, I think that's exactly right. And um, but later, you know, God curses uh, Satan and the snake um, that it would just, you know, travel on its belly. But initially, it, it, you know, Satan was masquerading as this angel of light. And again, Satan can shape shift all sorts of ways. What's interesting, too, is that, you know, when you think about so how Eve was um, beguiled by Satan and fell into this trap. You know, the consequence of her sin was that she owed a debt and a debt that could only be paid by death. And so she was a debtor to her sin. Now, one of the things that happened for me as I was writing this book is I read a ton of things. Like I mentioned, I have 553 references. And one of the books I read was called The The Unearthing the Lost World of the Cloud Eaters by Stephen Quayle and Dr. Thomas Horn. And they were actually writing about this great deception. And something they wrote just unlocked it for me. And I want to read to you. It says, this is the consequence of the sin of Adam and Eve in the garden, a consequence that continues to bear bitter fruit in our own sin to this day. The act of rebellion against the Creator's command put humanity into such debt that it could only be satisfied by the blood of Jesus Christ. But Satan was the banker who wrote the note. When I read that, again, just these clues started coming together. So here's, I want to lay out the picture for you all to consider. I think we have been beguiled by elite banksters who have been led by the great deceiver himself, Satan. You know, the the players that were involved in the creation of the Federal Reserve, they exuded Nephilim traits. They were master deceivers. They were so skilled at lying to the American people. You know, they were pretending to have the nation's best interest at mind. All the while, they're crafting this insidious system of enslavement. And so the fin- the Federal Reserve is actually financing the Nephilim agenda. Yep. And one of the other things... Go ahead. Yep, 100%. I completely and utterly agree. Go on. Sorry, I didn't mm-hmm. mean to cut you off. I just I, I wanted to read to you an excerpt that Congressman Lewis McFadden said, and this is back in 1932, and he gives a very apt description of the Federal Reserve. He says, we have in this country one of the most corrupt institutions the world has ever known. I refer to the Federal Reserve Board and the Federal Reserve Banks. This evil institution has impoverished and ruined the people of the United States. It has done this through the defects of the law which it operates, through the maladministration of that law by the Federal Reserve Board, and through the corrupt practices of the moneyed vultures who control it. Some people think that the Federal Reserve Banks are U.S. government institutions. They are not government institutions. They are private credit monopolies which prey upon the people of the United States for the benefit of themselves and their foreign customers, their foreign and domestic speculators and swindlers, and the rich and predatory money lenders. In that dark crew of financial pirates, there are those who would cut a man's throat to get a dollar out of his pocket. At no time in our history has the general welfare of the people of the United States been at a lower level or the mind of the people so filled with despair. They are the victims of the dishonest and unscrupulous Federal Reserve Board and the Federal Reserve Banks. Their children are the new slaves of the auction block and the revival here of the institution of human slavery. Boom. Yeah, so, boom. Boom. So here's what Congressman McFadden is actually identifying the deceptive and predatory practices of the Federal Reserve, which, again, are Nephilim traits. And so Nisha is the basis of our defiled monetary system. You know, the Federal Reserve is built upon usury. 
which is the lending with excessive interest. And the Federal Reserve's product is debt. And I think about, you know, King Solomon said it really well in Ecclesiastes 1.9. He says, you know, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There's nothing new under the sun. So when you think about it, you know, it's the same root defilement stemming back from the beginning of the ages. It's just repackaged and renamed to carry out, you know, more deception. And so I think, you know, one of the things that I recognize that I have a responsibility to do since I published this book is really awaken people to the impact that this Nephilim agenda has on us because it really affects our everyday lives and people don't realize it. And I don't want people to be hoodwinked by, you know, this agenda because they don't understand what's going on. All right, guys, we want to take another moment real quick to tell you about one of our sponsors. We're very excited to have him on, Tim Fall Hat. My bookie. Guys, listen, you know it's football season and you can pick winners all the time. So why not get paid for them at my bookie? Okay. Bet single games, spreads, money lines, parlay multiples together to increase your payouts with low contest entry fees and over a half million dollars be won my bookie makes it so you don't have to be a pro gambler to have fun get getting started it is easy just visit mybookie.ag and use the promo code tinfoil hat on your first deposit to secure a double deposit bonus beep, 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 beep. <laughs> That's promo code Tinfall Hat to get your first deposit match dollar for dollar all the way up to a thousand bucks. My bookie is proving is a proven sports book that makes it simple to bet and win. So make this your winning season exclusively at my bookie. So uh there's a lot to unpack. You know, uh in that, what you just talked about. First of all, you know, this has been discussed over time through social media and all this stuff is NASA mm. Nasha and how they just took out an H and called NASA Nasha NASA and mm. which is to deceive and people push back on that all the time and here we are looking up the definition they always leave clues they always leave clues mm -hmm. on what is what is really going on so i, I too have always believe that the Federal Reserve is not a, a government. There's nothing federal about Federal Reserve. Right. The old joke is that Federal Reserve is about as federal as Federal Express. It's a private entity, <laughs> right? It's a business. Right. Have you ever done research into where the Federal Reserve's actual headquarters are? Like in terms of, uh, I know they're like, it's like the Cayman Islands or the Bahamas or some like banana Republic that is like some kind of tax uh, paradise for, or what's it called when they, they hide their taxes somewhere, Johnny, uh, and, and where they can, you remember where paradise papers and, uh, and uh, Pandora papers yeah. were all the these papers, tax yeah. shelters. Is that what they're called? Yeah, yeah sure. Tax shelters. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know where the federal reserves headquarters is actually located? Cause it's not in America. Have you ever heard that? Like the IRS is the same thing. Do you have, have you heard anything about that? I haven't, um, I haven't researched that aspect. Um, you know, I've, I've more looked at kind of the occult underpinnings of the federal reserve, you know, how they describe, you know, these federal reserve banks is that there's 12 banks and, you know, the New York bank is the one that pretty much runs the show. But as far as like the behind the scenes headquarters, I wouldn't be surprised if it's linked with the Vatican treasury because, um, you know, the Rothschilds were both um, the Vatican treasurers, but also, you know, they, they pretty much were the ones behind birthing the federal reserve. It they is. say, they say there's a couple of, Federal Res uh, Reserve. Yes, banks. those are where those those buildings are yeah. located. But the actual, the actual uh, headquarters, meaning where they, uh, because it's it's some crazy ass story, and it's also you know where the IRS is as well. Is the headquarters of the IRS is not in the United States. It's mm -hmm. it's somewhere else. Um, mm -hmm. So let's get into. Um, I, mean, I mean, do you want to get into the occult of the Federal Reserve? Uh, any anything with that? 
Well, I think, you know, what is important to understand, like I mentioned, is, you know, there is this under dark underpinning of the Federal Reserve, and it's very much linked to the occult. One of the things that I do in my book is I trace, like I said, this Nephilim agenda all the way through human history. And so later into the book um, is when I uncover some of these secret societies. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I think... Um, is is actually more important is to help people understand how this nephilim agenda can affect their daily lives you know whether or not we're involved in the occult um it permeates absolutely everything and one of the ways that you know this nephilim agenda is advancing rapidly today is through the, what's called the fourth industrial revolution and so i kind of wanted to dig a little bit there yes, and then yes. also kind of uncover mind control technology and yes. strategies that are being used against us yes please let's get into it okay so you know, just for those that aren't aware of what the fourth industrial revolution is, essentially it's the convergence of all these advances in biotechnology and information technology. And of course, Klaus Schwab is one of the primary promoters of it. And here's what he has to say. He says, the fourth industrial revolution doesn't change what you're doing. It changes you. If you take genetic editing as an example, it's you that has changed. And of course, that has a big impact on your identity. So this fourth industrial revolution is really this fusion between our biological, physical and digital identities. And what it does is it it actually merges all this big tech data with, you know, quantum computing, AI, genetics, robotics and nanotechnology and it leads us unfortunately to this existential crisis this continue to exist in the near future now if we asked yoval noah harari of course he would say no he doesn't think so and i think a lot of people are beginning to realize who this character is you know harari is a historian but he's also the advisor of klaus schwab and here's what Harari has to say. He says, we are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. Within a century or two, Earth will be dominated by entities that are more different from us than we are different from Neanderthals or from chimpanzees. Because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies, brains, and minds. And this will be the product of the 21st century, not vehicles, textiles, and weapons, but bodies, brains, and minds. And those who control the data control the future of not just humanity, but of life itself. Because today, data is the most important asset of our time. So here we have Harari. When he's talking about, you know, the product of the 21st century being bodies, brains, and minds, oh, what he's referring to in part is what's called human brain organoids. I don't know. Have you guys heard of some of this technology that's happening? No, I mean, I've heard some stuff, but I'd love to hear what you've researched. So it essentially, you know, these brain organoids are, um, you know, they're artificially grown organs in vitro that resemble a brain. And so what happens is this actually originates from embryonic stem cells. Now, in 2020, these human brain organoids did not have a vascular system. So blood wasn't able to flow to these organoids, which means, you know, they were limited in size and viability. But with how quickly you know, technology is advancing. It won't be long before they figured out a way to get blood flowing. And when they do, that means more mature, larger brain organoids can be used. Now, I think it's important also to know that even now researchers are growing sections of a brain and they're transplanting those into the neurodegenerative areas of mice. And so you can see how Nephilim hosts are, are rapidly you know, progressing towards this transhumanism. That's what they're pushing. They want to replace humans. And if they're successful in turning us into hybrids, this, of course, would disrupt our ability to, you know, commune with creator God. And I really think, you know, the the progress that they're ma making and how quickly they're advancing is alarming. And so I wanted to give just a couple of examples of that. In 2004, or excuse me, in 2010, a geneticist named Craig Ventner, he actually created synthetic life by bioengineering a cell. 
And what his critics accuse him of is actually accuse him of playing God. And they warn us that these synthetic organisms could actually be used in a biological weapon. So it kind of makes you think, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah. then, um, you know, Ventner, just to be clear, he has altered the genetic code of life. And what experts liken his work to is actually the development of the nuclear weapon because Ventner's technology paired with what's called CRISPR technology, which is like gene editing software. It gives scientists the ability to create anything, um, you know, to create synthetic life out of anything, basically. And, you know, this is how they are trying to usurp creator God. And so, you know, we, it, it won't be long before humans can be hacked and our minds taken over. And then in 2019, we see, again, this advancement of AI and nanotechnology to the point where scientists are trying to create a global super brain through the use of nanobots. So there's this particular group called um, the Human Brain Cloud Interface Project. And the scientists you know, associated with this, they report that nanobots can um, navigate the human vascular and they can cross the blood brain barrier and then precisely auto position themselves among and within our brain cells. Then these little nanobots um, within our brain cells would then wirelessly transmit encoded information to and from a cloud-based supercomputer network, really for real-time brain state monitoring and data extraction. And so what you have is you have these scientists that are trying to connect human brains with AI to form a hive mind. And I think we really have to ask ourselves, has the stage been set for this with the COVID-19 injection? Yeah. yeah. And you, any thought you have, they're going to act on it. Yeah. Any I mean, thought? I was just thinking as you're talking about this, about how like all these sci-fi films about the future, they're always like people live in misery, right? I mean, everything is too much. That was technology. what was unique about Star Trek. Star Trek was the only show where people didn't live in, you know, some kind of state of misery about yeah, the future. That's yeah, why people I liked mean, it so much. It's almost like there's an animation on HBO Max about uh, us. Uh, what's that? Fa Sling Blade? Not Sling Blade. What is the famous... A Harrison Ford movie about the future. Um, Blade Runner. Blade Runner, right. Blade Runner. And just everybody lives in misery. Everybody lives in misery. We're in these huge cities. Mm -hmm. Everybody lives on top of each other. It's dark. It's dirty. They're creating like these fake people that they hunt down. Like this is all part of uh, all part of their agenda, man. I totally want Altered Carbon is this TV show that's popular. Very similar to Blade Runner and its, oh, yeah, and it's, it's uh, ideas about the yeah. future. Alter Carbon, yeah. Yeah, I mean, all that is there. All mm -hmm. of that is they let you know what they're trying to predict. Right, exactly. And, you know, you think about um, graphene oxide, for example. I think this is really what Nephilim hosts are using to advance to towards this hive mind reality. And, you know, you think about graphene, it's actually this amazing substance. You know, it's one single layer of um, carbon and it's, uh, you know, just one atom thick, but it is 20, 200, excuse me, 200 times stronger than steel and a thousand times more conductive than copper. And it also has this property where it's physically flexible and because it's ultra thin, it actually is one of the leading candidates in all these biomedical advances. And so you, you know, you have it in drug delivery, you have it in um, tissue engineering and neural implants and even, um, you know, neuro wires as well. And so, we, you know, we know that graphene oxide was in the injection, but it's also in other pharmaceuticals. But recently, scientists have figured out how to get it into our food, um, which is very alarming. And then it also can be aerosolized, which means there's all sorts of environmental means by which we can ingest graphene oxide. And once it's inside of us, essentially it becomes toxic when it's activated by electromagnetic frequencies, such as radio frequencies, 5G, you know, microwaves even. And so it's it's very um, 
I think it's very powerful in what they're trying to do with this graphene oxide. Now, another thing to consider about this is it's considered a neuromorphic memristor. Now, those are some big fancy words that my scientist friend Mitchell Florin gave me. But let me break that down a little bit because here's where it all ties together. So um, essentially, we can think of it like a memory transistor. But neuromorphic essentially means that graphene oxide has the capability of self-assembling into neurowires that function like brain synapses. So essentially we have, again, we have these little nano-sized robots operating in our brain. And then a memristor means that it can actually... um, save and process information as well as receive new signals, meaning that it can learn. And so essentially what you have is, you know, we know already that graphene oxide can cross the blood brain barrier. And given that it can, you know, morph into these neuro wires that act like brain synapses and turn into these little nano robots, essentially graphene oxide can embed thoughts into our brain. And that is the ultimate in mind control technology. Now, one of the things I always try and do, because I, you know, I dive into some deep, dark stuff is I always want to bring a sense of hope and genuine hope. And so the good news is that there are ways that we can detox from graphene oxide because most likely we have some in us based on all these different means that, you know, we can ingest it. And so one of the things that's important is Uh, glutathione is actually um, something that will help detox from graphene oxide. What is this? It's called glutathione. And it's actually, it's naturally produced in our liver. And it's made up of amino acids called glycine, cysteine, and glutamic acid. And so what happens is, you know, glutathione is really important in having this strong immune system. And so um, what we have is we want to figure out ways that we can, you know, increase the production of glutathione in our bodies because, you know, it's involved in tissue building and tissue repair. When, uh, you know, we have graphene oxide that is activated by EMFs and that overruns our bodies and exceeds the level of glutathione that we have, that's what triggers uh, the collapse in our immune system. So the good news, again, is there are supplements that we can take that will actually boost our glutathione. And those are N-acetylcysteine, or it's known as NAC, vitamin C, vitamin E, and curcumin and selenium. So those are what help boost our glutathione. But then there's also things that we can take that will help detox. And this is stuff that I do daily, um, you know, to help detox from graphene oxide. And there are things that, you know, are fairly normal, vitamin D3, uh, zinc. Then there's pine needle tea, quercetin, and activated charcoal. So I wanted to provide, because we are triune beings, you know, we're made up of body, soul, and spirit. I wanted to provide a ways that we can combat mind control on the level of our body. And that's what these supplements do. But I also think it's important to be equipped in knowing how to battle mind control on a soul level and a spirit level as well. Okay. Real quick before we get into how to break out, I want to talk a little bit about the Nephilim agenda and how the Federal Reserve plays into that. So, you know, we talk a lot about this here. The Federal Reserve, it, it's like, you know, Ron Paul was right about everything. So much of what our problems in this country right now are based mm-hmm. on is funded by the Federal Reserve. Okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, everybody, I know everybody loves Trump. I know it. You love him, and that's great. But just know, I mean, we got to call out stuff when we see it. Trump put BlackRock in charge of the Federal Reserve. They, they, they run the Federal Reserve runs BlackRock's uh, programming, computer programming, and system. Okay, what mm. happens is this whole thing goes down. You remember when everyone's like, "Oh, all these CEOs are stepping down, man," because they know the truth is coming. In reality, they knew COVID was coming, and they knew that the, all their 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 um their companies that they are running that 
they were all going to go to crap because everything was shutting down. So they all got out while their stocks and bonds were worth a lot of money. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. now we got this bailing out going, right? We, the Federal Reserve, every time, you know, you see the Federal Reserve bail, do giant bailout, know something's coming. So what happens right. is you got the, the Clintons deregulated all the media. They, they get it down to five people. Right. And now the Federal Reserve just dumps money into these mm -hmm. companies and these companies have billions to the tune of trillions. OK. And this is how they 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 get their agenda going. OK. So you have BlackRock. Everybody wants to work with BlackRock. Right. So BlackRock does his ESG stuff. The ESG stuff, environmental, social. They don't they don't you love how they call it governance, not corporate governance, because that's what it is. Corporations. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks fascism's coming in the in the form of some dude with a funny mustache throwing up hand signals. It's not going to be that, man. It's going to be corporations mm -hmm. that run everything. So in order to work with BlackRock and Vanguard, who I think is the real power, everyone wants mm -hmm. it to be BlackRock. If they if they're telling you it's BlackRock, no, it's somebody else. Nobody ever's talking Vanguard. Vanguard, you don't even know who actually is the giant stockholders or shareholders of Vanguard. It's the only company that doesn't have to tell you that because this is, I bet you, the Nephilim uh, a host, right? That's my humble opinion. Okay, so now you have all you have this these corporations that all own giant parts of each other. They they all together own thirty percent of each one of the major four that own everything. So it's it's literally one giant group working together to the tune of trillions of dollars. If you want to work with these companies, you have to get a certain score on ESG. And this is where the cultural Marxism comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. This is how it's done through the Federal Reserve bailing out these giant companies that make all these people do things that is not good for business, but it's good for this Nephilim agenda. Okay, So now you see this. So what happens is, let's say a donut time, a giant donut time company wants to work with BlackRock, right? They have to get a certain score. So they go down to the local LBGT, BBBB, whatever, and they're like, here's a... Here's some money. Uh, we want to fund your 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 projects. Okay, they don't know what they're funding, but they're giving it to this organization. And then the organization goes, and now they're doing drag time, drag queen story hour, and that's mm. how these things get funded. That's how it ends up going because these corporations have to get a certain score, and by funding all of this stuff, that whether it's uh, Antifa. The, the the super aggressive LBGT uh, agenda, all that mm -hmm. stuff. That's how they get the good score. So it all comes from the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve allows Disney to put out shows that nobody watches. Mm -hmm. Allows Netflix to put out shows nobody watches because when they get losses, all happens is the Federal Reserve bails out those top five companies, and now all the books are settled. So they're right. they're, they're literally funding this whole. None of this is natural. None of it. None of this, this woke stuff is natural. The, the very progressive left is American ISIS. We've talked about this before. Well-funded extremists sent to destabilize all through this Federal Reserve funny money. And now they're buying up all the houses. You're competing against banks using fake money to, buy, to spend 20% than what the person's asking for. You can't compete with that. So now they're buying up all the houses. Now they're going to make everything super expensive and they don't care if you rent it because again, they're going to get bailed out by fed funny money. Okay. And now you're homeless. Your family's living in the car. Now you might not even be able to buy a car anymore. That's all how right. this is done. Am I, am I yeah. right on that? Nailed it on the head for sure. Yes. And you know, the other thing that I would add that not many people know is you know, we watched the the massive bailouts like you're talking about um, after the Great Recession. Well, um, the Dodd Frank Act put in a bail in clause, which means you know no longer will uh, they get bailouts from the Federal Reserve, but if you know these two big to fail banks teeter on the edge of insolvency, they'll use a bail in clause, which means they can seize the assets or the deposits of their depositors. So those people that are have their money in banks could face what's called a bail-in. And when I discovered that, you know, doing the research I did from my book, we pulled out of all of the too big to fail banks and went to credit unions just to 
you know, preserve us. And the other thing to note is that um, the Vatican was recalling all their assets um, and gave September 30th as the deadline. So we are now, what, you know, a few days past that. And that alone could collapse uh, the global markets, calling all of those things back. And so it's just really important, yeah, to understand what the Federal Reserve is, where we're at right now in human history. You know, we have a fiat currency and fiat currencies all throughout history have always failed 100% of the time. They have collapsed under the weight of debt and gold always wins. And so I really think we are at the end of the fiat currency system. I think it's collapsing before our eyes, and I think it will pick up speed fairly quickly, um, you know, in the next several months where we begin to see things really unravel. Well, you know, you, you, have, a, you have a bunch of stuff going on. I know uh, Citizens United, which allow corporations to act as people and fund all of these politicians. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just ridiculous. And, you know, there are people out there that maybe uh, some people might have problems with, like the Unabomber, uh, Malcolm X, uh, which I support, but Malcolm X, and they talked about how the white liberal is the most dangerous animal in the world. And what you have in these super progressive, woke cities, such as L.A., San Francisco, sh- Chicago, New York, uh, where else? Philadelphia, Seattle, Portland. You have very, very rich, 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 rich liberal people who are able to mm-hmm. vote f- with their mm-hmm. heart be- and not with their head because they feel guilty about how good they have it and they're voting for policies and they're not feeling the ramifications of their actions. And that's what's mm-hmm. going on. And they would rather mm-hmm. v- vote for the 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 the, the people that uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. I've always said this: counterculture is just a war against their dads. That's all it is. They're voting against their dads and what their dads represent, and they won't. They feel this immense guilt for being born into a world of uh, a silver spoon, and at the same time, they kind of look down at everybody with pity. Like, oh, poor purse, ah, and they're just voting for these things that make Mm -hmm. no sense. And we've gotten away from any kind of, um, there's no, um, accountability. Right. There's nothing that says, Hey man, you did something completely wrong. You got to pay the price for that. They don't do that anymore. Because people are okay with it. Like they're all right. Like, I mean, it sounds dumb, but we, when we were in San Francisco, what were all the signs that were saying? Don't leave stuff in your car. Make sure you lock your doors. And I was I was complaining about that. And people were like, well, that's the price of living in San Francisco. People breaking your shit. Yeah, I mean, and they're just, okay with it. They're literally okay with because just, they can just go buy another yeah, gr- another yeah, stereo. Yeah, they can afford it. But another, when, when you're broke as fuck, that's not okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. And then no one goes to jail. Your your window's broken, and now you got to and that ruins your whole day. Yeah. I mean, and it costs you a lot of money. And now you're now you're wondering, oh, can I fix this? Can I fix my car? If I can't fix my car, how do I get to work? And and now what, now you want to get into this crazy that OPEC is like, yeah, we're going to cut down on oil production. You're like, what why? Because they're all part of this agenda. Mhm. People want to act oh, because they're like, it, it's all the same thing. If you think it's one religion that's doing this, you're just a crazy person. It's it's literally a behind the closed door, dark arts agenda. And then- yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so much of it is about controlling the masses. Like I talked about before, you know, the, the Nephilim hosts, they want to enslave the masses through mind control. And so you get people that, I mean, I used to live near San Francisco in the Bay area and San Francisco used to be one of my favorite cities. Yeah. And it's tragic to me what has happened to that city, but you get people with you know, who have come under that mind control that can't use critical thinking skills to realize, wait a second, this is a problem that there's so many homeless, that people are defecating on the streets, that people can just walk into stores and take as much loot as they want. And that's the price of living in San Francisco. That shows you how far they have, you know, these Nephilim hosts have come in utilizing mind control. 100%. 100 and the the indoctrination over time right just indoctrinations of this woke agenda through this school system which you know 
So somebody sent me this the other day. Bill Gates' grandfather founded the mm-hmm. Rockefeller's uh, Institute. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. Think about all, what we're going through in science and all that stuff. Like right. the Rockefellers destroyed our our healthcare system. He's been he's been a part of this since the jump, and it is dark arts. Mm-hmm. It is all dark arts. I mean, you look at the the Microsoft logo. It's a swastika. It just has pretty pictures in it, pretty colors in it, and nobody notices that. And they don't right. care. It's all done. And, you know, when you go back to, to, to like, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I don't think the Nazis lost World War II. I think Germany did. I think that was done on purpose to destroy Europe like they're trying to do right now. They're trying to destroy mm-hmm. Europe. That Gates thing is not true. What? He's not the grandson of uh, Frederick Rockefeller Gates. He's not? No. There's just a different Gates that just happened to be all part of that. Yep. Yeah. I mean that's that's what I found here. Yeah. Where'd you find it on? Snopes. Uh no, uh, just, I'm just on kidding. a few different yeah. websites. It's been fact checked by a couple of newspapers and stuff. Interesting. Okay, we'll see. We'll do some more research. We'll go deeper. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny. Uh maybe I'm wrong. I'm fine with I don't mind being wrong either. So let's get into how to get out of the mind control. What do you suggest? Because so I'm I'm a spiritual guy. I I I, I you know, I, I've uh, been open that my love of Jesus is growing. And I'm a spiritual guy, and, and um, I'm open-minded to a lot of stuff. And one thing I get into is the, that there are somewhat some laws of the universe, and that these people like Bill Gates and all these people are not bigger than the universe, that the universe is bigger mm-hmm. than these parasites. And, and in my mm-hmm. humble opinion, they're not going to win because they're going against, they're practicing scarcity, and when you should be giving out abundance. And when you practice scarcity, the energy of the universe comes for you, in my humble opinion. So what are your thoughts on all of that? Do you think we win this thing? Do you think they, what do you think happens and how do we stop it? Well, I I do think we win in the end, for sure, because God is um, almighty God. And, you know, these like you said, these parasites have nothing against God. Um, You know, one of the things that I always like to encourage people is that there's always a way out of the dark caverns of mind control because our creator, you know, he designed our brains with a capacity for neuroplasticity. And that is, I think, one of my most favorite aspects of our brain because it means that our brains are malleable and adaptable. And we actually read about this in Romans 12 too. It says, you know, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And so, you know, being this naturally inquisitive person, I wanted to figure out, okay, what does that actually mean to renew your mind? And because this was written in the New Testament, that's largely in Greek, you look at the Greek word for renew, and it's anakinosis, and it means to not only to renew, but to renovate and completely change for the better, which I love. And that comes from the root word anakeno, which means to cause to grow up, to make new, to be changed into a new kind of life as opposed to the former corrupt state. Now, come on. I think that is such good news. So what we can do every day is we can actually renew our mind. And I do that through prayer. Like, Lord, renew my mind day by day. You know, help me have the mind of Christ because his thoughts are so much better than my thoughts and his ways are so much better than mine. And, you know, when we do that, we are able to arrest that stinking thinking or toxic thinking that, you know, settles in. And, you know, as I mentioned, these Nephilim hosts at the core of the Nephilim agenda is the goal to strip us of our humanity. But in order to, you know, hijack our bodies and turn us into hybrids, they have to hijack our mind first. And that's why I think it's so important that we understand, okay, what are the tactics that they're using to hoodwink us because we can be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And, you know, one of the things that I think um, 
along the lines of mind control technology that's concerning, especially to me, is something called, it's it's actually the interaction between um, gene, genospirituality and gene editing. Now, genospirituality essentially just means like how our genes um interact with the environment and how we express spirituality. So some people, you know, that have a healthy spirituality, it may come more naturally to them because their genes, the way that their genes respond to the environment. But here's where it becomes really interesting. So geno spirituality can use geno edit or gene editing to actually control the expression of spirituality within individuals. So scientists know how to engineer our belief systems, which is frightening to me really. And I want to describe a little bit what I mean by this. So back in um, 2004, there was a scientist named Dean Hamar, and he actually discovered what's called the VMAT2 gene. And he discovered that this gene actually is um, in part responsible for our ability to develop a spiritual connection with God. And then subsequent studies, he actually uh, renamed it the God gene, um, you know, as a way to kind of emphasize his discovery. But then subsequent studies showed that if you actually alter this gene, you can reduce a person's ability to connect with creator God. Now, it didn't take the Pentagon long to figure out how they could capitalize on this. So in 2005, the Department of Defense released what's called the FUNVAX, and that stands for Fundamentalism Vaccine. And this fun vax uses an airborne virus to infect populations that they considered a high risk for religious fundamentalism. And so what they would do is, um, you know, they would infect that population with this virus and this virus would then decrease uh, the expression of the VMAT2 gene. Now, how they discovered whether or not it was effective is they looked at a couple of different behavioral indicators. One was So they would, you know, aerosolize this population that they thought was, you know, religiously fundamental. And then they would measure whether or not there was a decrease in activity in, uh, you know, religious activities. So decrease attendance, essentially, to different religious activities. And then they would also measure whether there was an expressed discontent towards God as measured by different forms of communication. So that would be like emails or telephone calls, different things like that. So the Pentagon essentially has figured out a way to alter our ability to connect with creator God. And I think we have to let that sink in for a minute because that is profound. Uh, Well, you know, it's interesting because this video I think they did something because there's a video of a gentleman presenting this video. Yeah. And it got passed around in low resolution, people saying it was Bill Gates. And now, when I you saw the high res, it's clearly not Bill Gates. 100%. And I think they did that to discredit the video in its entirety because it wasn't meant to be leaked. What, what you're talking about, Johnny, right now is nonlinear yeah, warfare. Absolutely. They do that. Mm-hmm. So if you watch the show, The Boys, they basically talk about oh, how they do that. They give away the secret, and that is that these powerful government agencies flood both sides with information so that neither side will ever be able to come to an agreement. So you put out this video that might involve this fun this fun vax thing, and you tell them, oh, look, it's Bill Gates. And w- w- when people take a look at it, they're like, that's not Bill Gates. Now it d- discredits this fun vax right. whole idea. And that's done on purpose. That it is layers yeah. upon layers and layers mm-hmm. of deceit, so you don't know if you're coming or going. And typical goldfish, all they're going to see is Bill Gates. Yeah. Now they forget what it should be about. What the fuck is the the vaccine he's yeah, fucking yeah, fucking with? Yeah, 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 wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of f words right there. A lot of ones. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of them. Uh, sorry about that, Doc. Uh, we're we're knuckle draggers over here. Um, but um, so yeah, I yeah. mean that's all done on purpose. Absolutely, and you know you think about. You know, all these different mind control tactics that are being played out, behavioral modification is probably one of the the classic 
techniques that has been used for well over a century in, you know, shaping the psyche of the American people. And so, you know, that involves giving out rewards for successive behaviors towards a predetermined goal and then doling out punishments for failing to meet the desired outcome. And of course, we saw this in 2021, right? You know, those people who were willing to get the injection, they were rewarded. You know, they were given free donuts, free beer, free McDonald's, you know, lottery tickets, these travel privileges, in-person learning. I mean, the list goes on and on. But those that refused to get the injection, they didn't get the same rewards. In fact, they were punished. Many of them lost jobs. You know, they they couldn't get seen in hospitals. They couldn't get the required surgeries that they needed. They had to travel to another state that would see them or they, you know, they couldn't sit at a family meal for holidays because they weren't injected. And this really is classic behavioral modification. It's shaping the behavior of the masses using positive and negative reinforcement. And like you said, it is all by design. And, you know, Klaus Schwab, he writes about it in The Great Reset. He says, you know, if the past five centuries in Europe and America have taught us anything, it's that acute crises contribute to boosting the power of the state. It's always been the case, and there's no reason it should be any different with the COVID-19 pandemic. So here we have, you know, these Nephilim hosts, they understand that fear is one of the most powerful drivers of mind control. And so they had to release fear and panic in the masses so that they could roll out their surveillance system. You know, there's, you think about it, there is no way Americans would come under surveillance that they would agree to that. But unfortunately, in 2020, we came under the, you know, the mind control tactics, these, the spell of these globalists, and we really acquiesced to it. And I actually refer to it as a war of frequencies because it's it's psychological warfare and it's an unconventional warfare, meaning that, you know, it's if we think about quantum physics, for example, you know, quantum physics teaches us that all matter has a frequency. Well, not only does matter have a frequency, emotions have a frequency. And so fear is one of the lower frequency emotions, whereas love is one of the higher frequency yeah. emotions. And so, you know, since the outbreak of the virus, so many people have come under the spell of these Nephilim host mind control tactics because they gave in to fear. And really instilling fear in the hearts of the masses is a hallmark trait of the Nephilim. You know, you think about those that know the story of David and Goliath, for example. Goliath, who was, you know, a Nephilim offspring, he used fear and intimidation to paralyze the armies of Israel. And it took David, you know, this young teenager who came on the scene and wasn't bound by that fear to take out Goliath. Well, you know, I think one of the biggest tragedies in the past two and a half years is really people became incapacitated by fear. And of course, you know, mainstream media, they know that a constant flow of fear-based stories will keep the masses stuck in their primitive brain where they can't access rational thoughts. And, you know, when you think about it, fear actually originates in the amygdala and it's that part of the brain that's considered the primitive brain the hind brain or the reptilian brain and when we're fearful our ability to process nuanced information is impaired and we're more likely just to blindly follow others rather than use critical thinking skills and that's what we've seen it's like people have lost their mind really since 2020 well before that too but certainly from 2020 on we always talk about it being a long-term game. Would you say they started this so they can do this 10 years from now and the kids now are going to be easily manipulated going back into COVID since they already had no, round, dude, round this one? This has been uh, even beyond 20. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, like you could get into 9-11 could be the jump start, but I think this has been going on. Yeah, but they're, they're picking at it. So 10 years, yeah, centuries. Like 10 years from now, they're going to do another lockdown and these kids are going to be like, oh, okay, we did it 10 years ago. Let's, let's do it again. Well, here's where it'll be easier I, I, I to get them. into that. I don't think real quick. It won't be a lockdown though. It'll be, it, I mean, it won't be a virus. You know what I'm saying? It'll be like, stay in your homes. You know, they have to keep mixing it up yeah. because we, I think the internet has the first time there's a permanent record of what they've done. And I, I, I mean, if you take a look at this Ukrainian thing, right? There is no movement for war. Nobody wants war unless you're a super rich 
conformist who's just trying to keep her job as a talking head on on uh, some news agency, right? Nobody wants it. They cannot budge, move the budget. They cannot move the, the, the nation to war. They're trying their hardest. We saw when they tried to do it with Iran, it's like, oh, they hit the drone. Ah, oh, drone, why? Why'd you attack our drones? Everyone's like, dude, we saw what you did with Iraq. You lied about that. And now they're, I, I'm telling you, man, every, like the, the war drums of nuclear war, Oh, war, nuclear war. Oh, it's coming. everywhere. It's coming. It's oh, everywhere. he's got you. Where got you? And this is anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. Dang. They want to, could they want to lower your frequency, raise your anxiety because you're, mani- you're easily manipulated. And when you're easily manipulated, you'll do what they tell you to do. And it's also when you got kind of back, you know, earlier you were talking about, you know, those who conform get rewarded. That is our school system. And that's right. why, and listen, man, my te- my parents were both teachers, you know, so I have a special place for teachers, but we're also seeing this TikTok generation being highlighted through these crazy people, but it makes sense because they, they, there's something about going into a, a teaching, which is a continuation of you being in school. Right. There's a little bit of that. Like people who thrived in school tend to like to go back to school because it's somewhere where mm-hmm. they, you know, there was some glory in those days. Whereas people mm-hmm. like me who spent all fourth grade in detention, like we couldn't get out quick enough. I'm never going to go back to that. Right. But the people who were like on the dean's list or the principal's list and all that stuff, a lot of times they like to get into teaching. Now, there's is some there's obviously a big part that they want to teach children. That's beautiful. But there's also something that they there is a system in which they thrived in conforming that they would like to keep conforming into that. And then when they start seeing all these things like these agendas, you know, again, it gets into this whole thing about fight and flight that so much of our basic wiring is, I, even though I don't even know if the story of K man is real, but you know, like this basic thing of fight and flight and, you know, waking up wanting to fight racism, homophobia, you know, uh, sexism, all these things that are almost like windmills, You know, will you ever end these things? They'll never get ended. They were here when you were here. They're going to be here when you're gone. And how much of it is actually affecting you? Now, am I saying that there's no racism out there? Of course there is. Of course there is. But it's like, there's a reason why when someone makes a lot of money, they move right out of the hood. That's a haunted house area, okay? But it's like these people are just fighting windmills because it taps into their fight and flight. The, The people who wear shields and masks and walk around hazmat suits during COVID. They love that because it tapped that fight flight in them. That is, it goes back to their, their basic drives. It's like why Mm -hmm. we're afraid of the dark because that's as our ancestors, that's when animals would show up. If you want to believe that Mm -hmm. storyline. So all Mm -hmm. of this is just a manipulation of the, uh, uh, of all the data that they know about how we operate. You know, it's interesting, too, if you think about the word pandemic, it actually, if if I break it down for a minute, it actually exposes the psychological warfare that's being waged against us, because the root word for pandemic is pan, and that actually is the name of a Greek god who was a hybrid, so it was half goat, half man, and pan was said to be, you know, god of the woods and the fields, and he would make this mysterious sound in the woods that would create contagious, groundless fear in crowds and people in lonely spots. And so that's why the word panic comes from the root word pan, as does pandemonium. And, you know, you think about pandemonium, it means it means um, wild, lawless confusion. And so you begin to see how this all connects. You know, it's really this psychological warfare that's been playing out. So a pandemic releases fear and panic. And, you know, that happens naturally within the psyche of some individuals. But then you get the, you know, the hysteria of mainstream media adding to it. And you find that there are contagious, groundless fear in large swaths of the population. And it's, again, it's really that that progression of this psychological warfare that the Nephilim hosts are waging against us. Release a pandemic, which will lead to fear and panic, which th- th- will then lead to pandemonium, which is what we saw in 2020 in the form of riots. 
And so I think, you know, once we understand that this is what is being waged against us, this war of emotional frequencies, we can actually rise above it because, you know, not only does prolonged fear actually weaken our immune system, but it drags us down to that lower frequency range where the battle is raging. And, you know, our creator, he understands that about us. And that's why he warns us, you know, I think it's like 52 times in the Old Testament to fear not. It's because he knows what happens to us when we do give in to fear. And one of the passages that I love is 2 Timothy 1 7, and it says, For God has not given us a spirit of power or spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. You see, we cannot have a sound mind if we live in fear. Yep. You know, we have to resist that and we have to be able to rise above it because the Nephilim hosts are attacking humanity at that lower frequency range. And, you know, that's why we want to um, be able to rise above fear. And how do we do that? I mean, it it actually is um, quite remarkable. First John 4, 18 describes how we do it. And it says, there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. So back to what I talked about, how fear is one of those lower frequency emotions. And then um, love is a higher frequency emotion. Love actually overcomes fear. And there is like fascinating research. I could go on and on, but I'll end with this. Um, the Heart Math Institute, they discovered that the magnetic field produced by our heart is more than 100 times stronger than that which is produced by our brain. So what does that mean? That means if we exude heartfelt emotions like love, empathy, gratitude, compassion, we literally can drive fear out of a room. And I think that's like having a superpower. <laughs> and I, I totally agree with this. And you know, my whole thing is I could believe in Christ consciousness that we're all connected and everybody wants to change the world. I don't think that's how it goes. I think you got to change yourself. And because we're all connected, you know, you start to mm -hmm. change the people around you. That's a frequency thing. And the, when you well, listen, man, people are going to do what they want to do. We live in this crazy time. And yeah. I, you know, I, I, I in my past, I, I, I engage in low frequency stuff and I've changed my life and I'm getting spiritual and I'm being a different person. I'm I'm engaging in different activities and try, I'm just trying to change my overall vibration. And as I change my overall vibration, I notice different people coming into my life and the people that I used to have be in my life. They, they used to call them lower companions. I really hate that because you are all. Yeah. If you're down there, you're they're not lower than you. You're you're with them in that. And they're in low frequency uh they're acting in low frequency behavior and, and you could do whatever you want just know when you do low frequency behavior you're letting in low frequency people and sometimes they want to hold you down you when you when you start to engage in high frequency it's a, it's my whole theory about simple versus easy our society is our culture is about easy. Everything's easy, easy, fast food, easy, like mm -hmm. pornography. Everything is easy, right? But simple is where it's at. Connection with God, praying, uh, meditation, uh, uh, practicing abundance, giving it all away. That is simple. Sitting in with nature, taking off your shoes, grounding, walking mm -hmm. on the earth. These are all simple things. These are simple. Mm -hmm. When you do easy, you let in low frequency stuff. And that's just mm -hmm. how it goes. And guess what? Sometimes it takes time to go th to change your life around. It's not going to happen overnight. It's just the way it is. And you have to take your time and you have to do it. But once you start mm -hmm. doing it, things start to change. There is no reality. There is only perception. And what you perceive becomes your reality. And if you're participating in this low frequency, high anxiety behavior, you're going to be scared for the rest of your life. And you're never going to get out of your own way. That's just the way it is, man. And these other people, it's like, you know, it's like one thing I read about the other day is like everything's going to work out because if you think it might not work out that means you worship two masters and that that god would ever let anything bad happen and sometimes if it doesn't work out the way you think it's because there's a different plan that's my opinion mm -hmm. if you didn't get the job you really want doesn't mean that god doesn't love you I mean there's something better down the line coming your way that was not what was meant for you to do and it's all frequency. And the last thing I'm going to say is like, man, I walk into my house all the time and Dana has the news on all the time. Imagine that. 
Imagine if you were watching House of the Dragons 24-7. That would be your reality. That's what you think is real. Think about how much, really, you people listening right now, ask yourself, how much of the problems in your life stem from your computer and, and television screens? But they love it. Well, like, like, like you just said, I can't get my mom off the fucking news. Yeah, because it taps into that fight or flight. And they just, and, and we're addicted to it. I mean, like tinfoil hat versus zero. Zero is all spirituality. It's about blessings. Tinfoil hat sometimes be, oh, what's going on? You know, it's just like it taps into a certain thing that people get addicted to. I mean, I, I hate bringing it up because everybody brings it up. Jeffrey Dahmer, killing it right now on Netflix. What do they want? Look, they want to be anxiety. They want to feel like, oh, he's still around. Fight or flight. Fight or flight. Fight or flight, it taps into that. Well, not only, I mean, he's being celebrated almost. You see the memes and everything? I mean, it's just, oh, uh, it's so, there's, so but, but that's, and they did it with Ted Bundy himself. a couple. They did it with Ted yep. Bundy, what, two years yep. ago, three years yep. ago? Yep. I mean, he these are the turn. same people oh. that go to comedy clubs and get offended by jokes, but then run home to watch Dahmer. And these aren't guys, this isn't Jack the Ripper we're talking about. The yeah. victims and the, the victims' families of these guys are alive. I mean, they're still out there. It's so crazy. And you haven't seen how crazy it gets. Now no. they're like, because you know how, like, I don't know if you, have you seen it? No, why, they, why would well, I watch that? The, I've seen a, the guy plays a really good actor. The females are now feeling sympathy for him. Oh, he, they killed him. Oh, because he plays, trust me, he plays it like, he plays it pretty well where he, he's like an innocent guy. And you got females like feeling sympathy for him. It was like low frequency shit. Low frequency, man. Low frequency. All right, Doc. Thank you so much for coming on. Your great final thoughts, Dr. Laura Sanger. Uh, final thoughts. Anything? Well, I think just to build on what you guys were saying, life can be so much better when you walk in those higher frequency emotions like love. I mean, when you exude love, you attract that back to you. And that's how we change our communities is one person at a time, renewing their minds, getting grounded and exuding love. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one more time, tell us about your book and where we can find it and your website. My book is called The Roots of the Federal Reserve. It's on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And then my website is called NoLongerEnslaved.com. I'm also on Telegram under Laura Sanger 444 Hertz. And you can visit my Rumble or YouTube channels, which is No Longer Enslaved. What's that frequency? 444 hertz. What is it? 444 that? hertz. Yeah, yeah that's that? a whole nother discussion. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we'll have you on soon to talk about that. Thank you for coming on here and uh, really Thanks knocking for out of the me. park. It was a pleasure. We appreciate those. Uh, so thank you very much. Hope to see you guys in Vegas at uh, Skank Fest. I hope to see you guys there. And uh, I will talk to you soon. Th hold on real quick. I want to tell you about the website. Thank you, doctor. We appreciate you. Take care. And uh, uh, please email us any links if you want us to add it. But I think I got your website and uh, your book. So we'll make sure. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Of course. Take care. Uh, wow, great show, huh? Really great episode. Thank you guys one. so much. Doctor was great. Hey, guys, again, real quick, if you, please go on samtriply.com. Jump on our email list because they're coming at, after us. I mean, it's only a matter of time. So join it. You'll find out all the shows coming out, all of our live events that any of us are doing. Uh, it's a great way. If you want to support the show, and listen, man, we we only ask you if you support us. We, we give you great product. We ask for a little love. Just go to rockfin.com. Go to samtribute.com for all my, my uh, tickets, but go to uh, rockfin.com. We have some great premium content there. We have uh, Zero, the spiritual podcast. We have Tim Fall Hat. I'm doing two of those a, day, a week, an AMAs, and then a, an interview with a, uh, a guest. And then we also have Conspiracy Social Club with Brian Callen. My good friends on this show also have some premium content there. We have We Don't Smoke the Same. How's that been going? It's kicking. It's kicking. It's kicking butt. And also, uh, Broken Sim Early Look. Now, here's the thing, guys. Yeah, a new one's about to drop. Ooh. A new one's about a new one's about to drop. Guys, here's the thing. You get all that. You get six shows for me, show for him, show for him, 
all for ten dollars a month. There is no better value than that. Okay. Great. No, no better value. Is there a better? Not value? even a happy meal. Not no. even a happy meal is a better value. The Eddie Bravo's on there as well. I think he's like the number one show. Um, he's, he's got crud- killer guests. Like, look at this. I love that Jimmy Dore went on uh, Eddie Bravo. That's the we best. Gotta, I haven't. I didn't know that. I gotta listen to it. Yeah, for sure. So that's a great one. Um, also, I have uh, in these crazy times, you want to invest your money. You got to invest your money. Go to CashDaddies.com. Check it out. Patreon.com. CashDaddies uh, slash CashDaddies. We are doing great work on there, uh, Johnny. People are killing it, right? Even in these crazy times. Oh yeah. People yeah. are uh, uh, Howie is crushing it, and Cash Daddies is great. You can also listen to all of our our free content we have. Look at that! Look at Past all that. performance is not a guarantee of future returns. Yeah, I mean for sure. <laughs> I mean that's you got to you got to you got to figure that. You do you, your money's worth for the thousand though. Yeah, that's for the sure. only one that you do. Well, yeah, uh, if we're talking about the thousand, the making <laughs> whoopee tier. Yeah, that's. And- that's a whole different ballgame. That's guaranteed returns. <laughs> yeah, that's make, what, make, make yeah. better love, bro. That's uh, yeah, my, yeah. my all of my projects. Uh, everything I do is how can you be a better you, spiritually, even when financially, it's a project that you've weaseled your way into sexually. Uh, that okay, you that's initially had nothing do to do with. That's how we do it. Let's give it up for uh, uh, Xavier Guerrero dropping f bombs in front of the Christian lady. Yeah, right like, yeah, like uh, you literally used the f word as a noun, a verb, and an adjective in the same sentence. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Well, you're like this doctor. fucking guy's fucking with me. I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> Uh, we have some wonderful stuff going on too. Uh, if you're looking for T-shirts, I gotta flip that. I don't know why conspiracies at the top. Some great new shirts are out. Go down. Uh, yeah, uh, that I got a great shirt coming out right now. But spooky action. My favorite is all my heroes are shadow band. Great way to support the show. Great way to support the show. And just go to TimFallHatT-shirt.com or SamTripoli.com. Click the link. Uh, gold and silver. You heard the doctor talking about gold and silver. We have a great affiliate program uh, with Wise Wolf Gold and Silver. Uh, click that. I got a ton of silver from him. I'm probably going to buy some gold coming up. Think about pulling some money out and uh, buying some gold. And bang, banging that out. What else do we got? Um... Nuke Social. Okay, what is Nuke Social? You see below there, I have some uh, Only Conspiracies, uh, Telegram, and I have Zero. Those are based on groups, you can like-minded people. The best part about Nuke Social, which is my new social media, is that you can go on there and you could still interact on Telegram as well. So check out Nuke.Social or go to SamTriple.com. Anything else, guys? No, oh, all it. of our, look at all this free content. Like I said, we're going to have a new uh, Broken Sim coming out this weekend. Broken oh. Sim. Oh, and I got a show. Actually, I do got a dope show in El Monte, uh, October 12th. I got Lee Syatt, the Flying Jew. Craig Cotton, he's been on uh, Sam Tripoli's uh, Comedy Cow show. It's going to be great. Me, E-Zone, get the VIP package. I guarantee you it's going to be worth Go it. Go check that that's out. Go check that that's out. That's El Monte if you're yes. a white guy. Yeah, and that's El Monte. At, that's El Monte. Yes, and that's at FullyToxic.com or Eventbrite or any of my links. Go head over there. All right, cool. Anything else, guys? No, no. No, guys, thanks for listening. This is how we're going to do it. We're trying to figure out the best way to get you to the show and also get out all this stuff that we're doing. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Check out samtriple.com. Jump on our newsletter, and we will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. And finally, we just want to give a shout-out to us, you know, some swarm people. Uh, these guys come to my shows all the time when I'm in Chicago. So I want to give you guys a, 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 a little shout out to my boys Aftermath. They got a great song called No Time to Waste. Uh, here it is. Check it out. Uh, again, Aftermath, No Time to Waste. Thank you guys for supporting us, and we want to support you. Check out this awesome song. Enjoy. The scumbags are in control.
deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, tin foil hack, tin foil hack.